feels to me like in, uh, AMD's biggest problem is that it's not NVIDIA. Absolutely. And no matter what they do, it doesn't seem to allow them to ha have any sort of reaction like NVIDIA gets. NVIDIA announces something new, stock goes up a lot. AMD announces something new, no reaction. Why? I mean, absolutely. I mean, can you imagine being AMD this weekend? You're ready to go with your big announcement, and then Jensen comes up and announces a roadmap till 2027. What Jensen's doing there is signaling to the hyperscalers and to the developers. If you're thinking about switching off, if you're thinking about building in-house, we have you covered for the next four years, three years, whatever it may be. AMD comes in. It's never going to measure up to that. They're talking about two generations previously in terms of the benchmark. So it's tough to be AMD right now. But that being said, I'm not fully crying for them. I mean, this AI boom has lifted them mm -hmm. about 30 percent over the past year. That's good, for, good news for a company that was really struggling in the middle of a PC downturn. Is it is it long term moat that is giving NVIDIA such a big theoretical advantage or is it just simply first mover advantage is so first and so big that it's going to, it's going to take so long for everybody else to catch up? Yeah, it's, it's momentum because what, what NVIDIA has, it has a better chip and it has the software that all these developers are, devel are developing AI on. And so if you're an AI developer, you're thinking about this and you're saying, wait a second, NVIDIA is pretty expensive. We don't know if we're going to get the supply. Let's look at others. And you look at others and it has to be way better than NVIDIA chips because you're going to have to develop on a new software framework. And then meanwhile, NVIDIA is just saying, you know, you're already with us. You're already developing. You already want these H100s. You want Blackwell. We're going to you know, <laughs> raise it one more and show you Ruben. Now, if you're in a boardroom, how do you then justify saying I want AMD instead? You really can't. It's the overflow. Yeah, when you when you look at stock moves like uh, Nvidia up another four percent today, it's up you know a hundred and twenty nine one thirty one hundred and thirty actually right on the nose percent year to date. You th you think what does it make sense <laughs> to you? Not as a stock picker, but as a story um, watcher. The big question is going to be whether all this investment in Nvidia is justified, and we just don't have that story at the, you know at the bottom line right now. We have something like there's been numbers that Sequoia Capital I think has thrown out that 50 billion has been spent on Nvidia AI GPUs, maybe three billion in revenue has been made. You know maybe that goes up a little bit more after Apple's event next week. But we're going to need to see ROI not just in enterprise, not just in areas like customer services. Uh, but in consumer and in, in a much broader segment of the economy, including what Jensen said yesterday, which was shipbuilding. I mean, you're going to have to see this brought in everywhere to justify these numbers. Now, I think NVIDIA is going to be fine up until the next generation, Blackwell. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that's going to be sold out. But when it comes to this Rubin thing, that's really when we're going to find out whether this thing can continue to grow at the pace that it's been okay, growing. Okay, you mentioned next week, Apple, WWDC is what you're alluding to. We're going to be there broadcasting live as all of this unfolds. What's at stake? So Apple right now is going to make a big bet on its operating system. All the reports show that Apple is going to try to integrate AI deeply into its operating system. So with natural language, you'll be able to connect certain applications and really operate an iPhone in a way that you haven't been able to recently. I mean, Siri, we all know, has been a disappointment, disappointment the graphic user interface. OK, tap, tap, tap. You can figure out your way around. Can Apple make a product that that's, much, that's that much better by connecting different apps and different commands through Siri, through whatever voice interface, or even text interface that it's planning to roll out. That will be the big question. And I thought, okay, maybe baby, baby steps. We saw, you know, the, the news of like voice memos and maybe images, dancing emojis, whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. But it looks like they're really going a level deeper and saying the operating system is the bread and butter on the iPhone. We're going to make some big changes there. I applaud. That's a bold move that Apple's going to make. We'll see how big they go, how far they go, and when it's coming, because we might not see it until 2025. How much of a wow does it have to be, just given the fact that they are, in quotes, last to go in terms of what you're really going to do from an AI standpoint and how we can think about the monetization of it, whether it's going to lead to some great upgrade cycle and things like that? I think it has to be a wow. I mean, I think Apple really needs this. I mean, think about what they did with the Vision Pro. They made everybody think that uh, virtual reality, augmented reality, mixed reality, whatever you want to call it, was going to be a thing that we're going to start using today. It hasn't fully panned out that way, but they have the marketing muscle. They can tell a story better than any other company in Silicon Valley. So if they can't tell a story about AI, it means that inside the company, there's not exactly the momentum and the vision that there might be on other products. So I think, you know, whether or not we're going to see an AI iOS starting next week, we really need to see a clear vision from Apple. And there's a lot at stake here because the stock has run up. And listen to uh, also, you know, the, the history here is they've, they've proven that they don't have to be first. They've just been capable at being best. 
Now, I'm not suggesting that their AI offering, it could be apples and oranges to what, you know, the others have already introduced. It doesn't have to be that. But in terms of the category they're in, they don't care about being first as long as they get it right. Yeah, and I love this partnership that we're hearing about that they're going to have with OpenAI, which is going to power a lot of this stuff. They've also talked to Google. I think they realize that they haven't been the best at developing this technology internally, but by God, they're going to be the best at trying to integrate it into an experience for consumers. And, you know, it's still, there's still a large percentage of the population that hasn't really seen AI. Maybe they've seen it on the top of WhatsApp or the top of Messenger, but ChatGPT still only has 100 million users, according mm. to the latest data. Mm -hmm. This is We're talking about billion-plus iPhones that are out there. No, so that's a good point. This could be a real opportunity for them to introduce this, introduce it and you're right be potentially last or late but be the one that matters